What's up, brand builder? Stephen Horahan here on the Brandmaster Podcast. And in this episode, I'm speaking with David Schreer, CEO and Chief Strategy Officer at Siegel & Gale, a global brand experience firm headquartered in New York with studios in Los Angeles, San Francisco, London, Dubai, Shanghai, and Tokyo. Now, in case you didn't know, Siegel & Gale was established in 1969 and is a global leader in strategic branding known for creating emotionally engaging brands across diverse industries. They specialize in brand strategy, digital design, and employee engagement. And their unique simplicity index tool assesses brands' impact on customer loyalty, underlining their innovative approach to brand narratives. I have to say I thoroughly enjoyed my chat with David, who is clearly a well-traveled, well-read, and cultured leader who's passionate about branding, and the agency's philosophy of simplicity. And in our chat today, David opens up on how simplicity goes beyond clarity with an element of surprise, the importance of message hierarchy and the so what narrative, and his favorite examples of brands that have their strategy nailed on. So if you want to learn about how to build brands through simplicity from a brand consultant and leader of one of the biggest global agencies in the world, then don't miss this episode of the Brandmaster Podcast. Now, before we dive into the episode, I want to take a second to show some appreciation. I appreciate every single one of our listeners, but I have a soft spot for listeners who share the love. A shout out to Huza Diaz from Panama. I'm sure I butchered that. I loved episode 83. I just listened to episode 83 and really loved the episode. I agree that great storytelling transports readers and viewers to new and unexpected places where they can easily digest unfamiliar concepts and consider different perspectives. I'm looking forward to listening to more. If you want to share the love and possibly get a shout out on the podcast, please take a couple of minutes to leave a review on your favorite platform. Welcome to the Brand Master Podcast. Show specialized in helping branding professionals and entrepreneurs to build brands using strategy, psychology, and creative thinking. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Brand Master Podcast. And I'm absolutely delighted to have on the show with me today. We just took a few minutes having a chat offline and uh, you know, comparing notes, and it was quite an interesting chat. And I think it's going to make for a very interesting chat today. It's David Streer from uh, Siegel and Gale there in New York. David, thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. Thanks for having me. Now, uh, we're, we're going to get stuck into, uh, you know, a, a lot about branding, a lot about simplicity, because I know that's the philosophy that you hold dear and the philosophy that uh, Siegel and Gale, your agency, holds dear as well. But before we get there, can you give us a, a bit of a background as to how you made it to such a, a a lofty position. I know that a lot of a lot of our listeners are, uh, you know, they're they're um, you know, they're they're strategy advocates. They're they're um, they they love the idea of of working with big agencies or 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 working with big brands in a um a, a strategic environment. How did you get to the role that uh, that you're at there, and and what was that journey like? Well, it's it's an interesting question. I I um. As I get older, I guess I get that question more and more frequently. And um, the honest answer is, because really what you're talking about is career management. And and I I must tell you, I never spent a day planning my career. Um, you know, I think that uh, I came out of a liberal arts uh, educational background. Um, and really um, had an interest in business uh, and creativity. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I didn't want to go to law school. I, you know, I couldn't go to med school because I don't understand chemistry. Mm -hmm. um, so I, would, I looked for businesses where those two things were, were present and spent the first uh, 18, 20 years of my career in the uh, advertising agency business. Mm -hmm. Um, as an account guy. Um, and for a variety of reasons, then ultimately transitioned um, to the world of corporate brand building. Mm -hmm. um, I, I always liked um, working with words. I always, you know, I'm a, I'm a big reader. Um, I always look at, for example, I look at the alphabet the English alphabet 
And as long as I've been around, uh, it's only had 26 letters. And but those letters are just sitting there and they're waiting for the right person to come along and put them in the right order and the right cadence and create ideas that can move people, cool. uh, that can move businesses, that can move organizations. And they're just sitting there. It's not dissimilar from, you know, the strings on a violin, mm -hmm. or the keys on a piano. They're just waiting. And I, and I always, that has always been so interesting to me. Um, and I've seen the impact of ideas. Um, we all see the impact of ideas. And, and I just love doing that. And uh, I did it. I got to Siegel and Gale and uh, I've been there now almost 25 years. Um, and for the, you know, for the first decade there, that's what I did. Hmm. Um, and um, then as just, you know, career evolution, I think many young people um, who are developing their careers, um, one of the things that they're going to confront um, and I and I and I talk about this um, frequently is that if you are a practitioner, if you're a, a, a woman or a man that is that has real sense of purpose doing the kinds of things I just described, there's only so far you're going to go in an organization. Cool. OK, because ultimately, as you advance, um, other things other responsibilities kick in um, and you have to try to figure out a way um, to balance your desire to work with words and ideas with the needs of learning how to run a business and run a business profitably and grow a business. And that is that is that is ultimately the decision that people who are advancing in their careers have to make. Mm -hmm. uh, some people don't want it. Some people would, would say, I'm very happy doing what I'm doing. That's what I want to do. Um, some people can do that at organizations. Some Many people do that um, on a freelance basis. Mm -hmm. But if ultimately you want to run an organization, you have to know how to run an organization. Absolutely. And so <laughs> for me... I can't give anybody any career advice because I never even thought about it. You know, I'm, I was, a, I was a guy that liked to do crossword puzzles and read great books and it just has happened. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I'm lucky because I was very fortunate to have um, people who were very supportive of me um, on both sides of the, um, the, the sort of the continuum that I'm talking about. There were people early on in my career at Siegel and Gale who really helped me be, become a, a good strategy practitioner. And then there were people later in my career who understood business and how to run business and how to measure business and how to grow business um, profitably that helped me there. So, um, but it all started for me with doing something that I like to do. Mm hmm yeah, and uh, I, I I really love the analogy of of the the violin strings, and um, you know I can uh, I, your story kind of resonates with me quite a bit. Not not because the journey is the same, but the idea that uh, because I come a, come from a creative world as well, and and I only got so far in that world when I wanted to help businesses further, um, and that's when the 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 world of of language and and those letters came in and you know that's when i pushed into this new world and then you know the more you push into that world the more you realize that in order to build that organization you have to push out of that world as well so i mean that 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 really does resonate with me but with me but um yeah i i i have the same feeling towards words and when i yeah. stumbled upon that world it, it I never thought that I would like something as much as the the visual design side of things right. uh, but but when I came on to you know the the manipulation of words and sounds and how they have this beautiful uh synchronicity together when you put them in the right order uh, you know it's something there's something poetic about it that I that I absolutely love so uh, oh, no. you know I love your philosophy on that 
it's um, elegance. It's elegance. It is. It is. And and every scenario and every situation and every strategy calls for a different dance. And and that and that's Absolutely. what I love. Um now when it comes to, to Siegel and Gale, there is a big uh you know widely understood philosophy that you guys have of simplicity and again that's something that you know i i you know uh, you're singing to the choir there can you explain the simplicity philosophy and its role in your branding approach at siegel and gale absolutely so siegel and gale was founded um over 50 years ago by a guy named alan siegel and uh alan um it was not at the time a branding company Mm-hmm. Um, because 50 years ago they were brands, but they were they were pre um by today's measure, certainly prehistoric. Um, but Alan founded um a document simplification company. He he um his cause, his passion was that things were too complicated for him. Mm-hmm. Life was too complicated, unnecessarily complicated. And it drove him crazy. And so what he did was he founded a company to simplify documents. And um, that notion, I mean, Siegel and Gale is the company that in the U.S. brought the taxpayer the 1040 EZ form. Mm-hmm. You know, Siegel and Gale is a company that that led the way in the 60s and 70s. They were right at the head of the plain English writing movement. Um, but it was always about and this is a key, I think, a key point. You know, if people often um, ask me who I believe our key competitors are, um, and you know, you you can rattle off the names of the you know the global branding firms, um, but I think that there's a difference in terms of motivation between listing your competitors and listing your enemy. So. And I think enemy is is a better way to look at it. Um, and at Siegel and Gale, our enemy is complexity. That's what we're trying to kill. You know, that's why we're doing the work. Now, fortunately, organizations around the world can create complexity at a phenomenal rate. <laughs> okay? And that in 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 a nutshell is why we have a business model mm-hmm. okay that's why we have a business model because organizations and it's it's not a judgment um we we work with phenomenal organizations who are phenomenally good at doing something okay across industries whether it's technology or financial services or not for profit or um telecom or um heavy duty manufacturing or education they're all good at doing something mm-hmm. they're not good at explaining in a clear credible compelling way why they matter mm-hmm. and further by and large they're not good at aligning what they do literally what they do with a clear credible compelling strategy mm-hmm. it's just not the way they think you know many organizations believe the best way to build a brand is to tell people absolutely everything they can about the cost about that organization mm-hmm. and nobody wants has time to hear that <laughs> i remember i tell the story i was once um tootling around in a car in provence in france and um i came into this little town and the car broke down and fortunately i got i got lucky in two ways number one it broke down right in front of gas station nice (laughs) that was good well actually three good things one it 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 broke down in front of gas station two is that the guy uh who ran the gas station was an expat american so he could speak english and three there was a really 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 good little French bistro right across the street. Nice. He came over, right? And so he came over and he said, I said, this thing doesn't work. Can you, can you, uh, can you take a look? And he said, yeah. He said, go, go have, go have a Niçois salad and a glass of, 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 of red wine or what have you and come back in and out. 
And so I came back in an hour and he said, I said, well, what do you think? He said, well, come, let me come and show you something. He opens the hood of the car and he, stop, he starts talking to me about things like catalytic converters, air hoses, spark, spark plug firing times. And I said to him, stop. <laughs> I have three questions for you. Can you fix it? How fast and how much? That's what I needed to know. And so I think part of the complexity for organizations and the reason that they feel the need to tell all is that they're thinking about it from their perspective and what they want to say rather than somebody who's experiencing it and focusing on what that person wants to hear. Mm -hmm. So that's, you know, the complexity is, is the, is the model. The other point I want to make um, about simplicity is that we have a very prescriptive definition of simplicity at Siegel and Gale. Mm -hmm. Simplicity is not simply clarity. How many things in the world out there, marketing related, life related, uh, pick your area are really clear but so boring mm -hmm. that you'd rather have root canal okay um conversely there are things out there that are fascinating but i don't understand what they're talking about mm -hmm. it's when clarity intersects with what we call surprise that you have what how that's what we mean when we talk about simplicity. And I, I tell the young folks today, I said, I'll give you an example. I, I once in my career had presented, um, was presenting a, a strategy recommendation to a, um, a financial services company, uh, a, actually a, a leadership team. And this, at the end of the presentation, the, um, the CEO stood up and he said, I, I just want, I just want you to know, Number one, that you truly understand this organization. You understand what he said was our DNA. Mm -hmm. Two, however, you have you have explained that to me in a narrative that has never occurred to me. Mm -hmm. So it's that combination of clarity and surprise which we define as simplicity in our place. Yeah, uh, that's, I mean, in a single question there, you gave me a few different stories. You gave me a few different examples. I could dig in and uh, and, and and go down a rabbit hole on so many different levels there. <laughs> I, I, on, on, on your note of that story, I actually uh, ran out of petrol one day and yeah. the, the engine stopped yeah. right right on the edge of of the entrance to the to the uh garage and it literally rolled up to the pump <laughs> that's where it stopped lucky but, man. Uh, you're lucky well, man. yeah but your story your story sounds like it could fit into uh peter males uh a year in provence it sounded uh it sounded uh, quite picturesque you're, you're, uh, indeed. you're dating yourself now Ah, uh, it's one of my favorites. One of my it's favorites. A good one. It's a good it's, one. It's a it's a very good one. Um, good one. Now you you touched on something a little earlier. I want to go back to, and that is, uh, clients want to tell everybody everything, and I think that's so true. Um, and uh, our job as brand builders is to help them strip away all of that complexity, so that we're left, as you put it, not just with clarity, um, but you know, with that element of surprise. And that's where, uh, you know, that's, uh, you put that together with the narrative and, and and that's where it kind of all comes together. You talk about hierarchy of messages. Can you give me a breakdown of what you mean by hierarchy of messages? Yeah, sure. Um, the, the, best, the best way to talk about that is, um, and you've heard this, I'm sure, as have many of your viewers, the 15 second elevator spit, uh, hit, uh, uh, mm -hmm. pit. You know, you're in an elevator and you're selling your company. You have 15 seconds. Mm -hmm. um, the, what we, what we, when we, and we actually um, tell clients to try to do that. Um, what they, what, 
what clients will, where they get sort of caught up is they tell what we call a what story. Mm -hmm. What we do, where we do it, uh, how many times we did it last year, who we do it to, how many times and where and who we do it to um, we hope to do next year. It's, it's facts, it's figures, it's details, it's stuff. What we try to get clients to do is move the headline because in a what story, there is no headline. Mm -hmm. There's just what. So we try to get our clients to move from what we call a what story to a so what story. Okay. What to so what, okay? And a so what story is really um, an encapsulation of um, what an organization stands for, mm -hmm. um, how it's distinctive, what it do, does really well, and most importantly, why anybody should care. Mm -hmm. Now, all those other facts don't go away. They become proof points for the so what story. Mm -hmm. So that's what you mean by hierarchy. You know, a, a, a good, a well-branded narrative. If uh, it, it's not a, it's not a, um, um, what's the tool where um, to, that that um, it's not, it's not a battering ram. It's not this flat thing. It's a spear. It's a mm -hmm. tip, mm -mm. and the tip of that spear is the so what, and everything behind it is the what, mm -hmm. and making that. Making that evolution is um, because clients don't want to give up all their what because they're proud of it and they should be proud of it. All of those things have contributed to the success of their organization. Mm. But again, the what is the what is not going to move somebody. Mm -hmm. It's the what supporting a so what and the so what is otherwise known as a benefit. Mm -hmm. So that's mm -hmm. that's what hierarchy is, and 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 really, as strategists, um, I think that I think I would say that one of the ways to ensure that an organization gets a good uh, brand strategy is that they need to be willing to say no to things. Mm. We're gonna if we're gonna be about this then you have to make a conscious decision that you're not going to be about that or that or that. Mm -hmm. You're just not going to do it. And really, really, um, organizations who have a really good understanding of brand are, see the value in saying no. Because mm -hmm. you, you got to stand for something. You have to stand for something. Mm. Yeah, and I I love the pointy end uh, reference that you 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 put on the messages, and it's it kind of aligns to something that I speak about as well. I speak about the primary and the secondary message. You know, right. you can have a great purpose, you can have all these values, um, you know, you can have the founder story, but unless you scratch the what's in it for me itch, which is the primary message, then none of the rest of it matters. Um, and knowing Absolutely. and knowing what to 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 put on the forefront to 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 put on the the front end of the spear is super important to cut through that noise and to scratch that itch and to give them the meaning as to what you're going to represent to them in their lives that the competitors just aren't. So you know, I I I love that pointy end uh, reference, and I think it's uh, you know that so what story. It really does help brands to to you know say as you said not not forget about the other stuff but to just put them on the on the back burner so that we're putting the important things what's important to the client front and center so that they get it they I, understand why you're there yeah and i would say that um within the context of proof points those those what's are critical mm -hmm. But they're they're not critical as headlines. They're critical as support points for a so what story. But you have to have them because mm -hmm. otherwise yeah. you're just making a promise. 
And that's it. It's it's like, uh, you know, you paint your door red and you you have a, a beautiful tassel on the front. And, and then, you know, you put all the work into the front door and then you go in and there's there's nothing there. As you said, the proof points, that has to be the inviting table, the nice lighting, the smell of food from the kitchen. You know, it's the whole package. But, you know, you're not going to get them to come in through the front door if it's a raggedy old door and it doesn't speak to them. Um, well, that's absolutely right. And that's, you know, I, I, I love the house metaphor. Mm -hmm. uh, because I, you know, it can look really great, but you might be on a Hollywood set, you know, that, that's it. You look that's like you're in a Western town, but that's it. No, there has, there's, there's no foundation to that house. There has to be substance. You want to be able to put your head down on a pillow. Um, can, can you share some examples of brands that successfully embrace simplicity that you've kind of worked with you've been there you've been in the yeah. engine room and and you know how that has impact their success well you know it, it it you know it all all of it is um you know there 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 are, are are thousands of them i mean i one that comes to mind is um work that we did uh several years ago for the uh, ymca mm -hmm um they they were having uh recruiting problems uh they were having uh in terms of um not recruiting they were having enrollment problems um and they were having hiring problems um and when we when we started really to um look at them what we found was that they had really because they are a local organization um that that you know when you ask people about what the ymca was uh, the headline was, oh, it's 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 swim, it's swimming pools and gymnasiums and weight rooms, uh, all sort of um, sort of came under the uh, the colloquialism of swims and gyms. This mm -hmm. is what the water was. And um, the other thing was that the uh, visual and verbal identity um, across, um, the United States was, it was literally all over the place. Cause you would have every little community, uh, why, uh, creating its own thing. Um, so there, there really wasn't, um, a unified, so what story. Mm -hmm. Um, and then the execution was, um, really diffuse. Um, so there was no clear, consistency um and we really felt that that was you know there was this this could be um and how we viewed it it was a call it could be a cause but you can't create a cause around swims and gyms mm -hmm. so you know in doing the analysis what we distilled was that really the, these local YMCA's played a far, far more important um, role in um, building the foundational elements of community. Mm. Um, and and we found really that there were three areas. One was youth development. Uh, one was healthy living, mm -hmm. and one was social responsibilities. And so, it was about moving the organization from the what story, which is swims and gyms, to the so what story, which was all about building and strengthening local communities. Mm -hmm. And we used youth development, healthy living, and social responsibility as the what's. Mm -hmm. the points. Um, we also recommended in terms of simplicity. Um, so that was one simplicity. I don't have the um, maybe we can forward it to you. The before of their brand architecture, you just would not even believe. It, it mm. was just literally um, spaghetti. <laughs> a dog's breakfast. It, it really was. So we simplified the story. We also recommended uh, that the organization officially adopt its nick its famous nickname, which was not the YMCA, but it was the Y. Mm -hmm. It was a much friendlier, more modern sensibility. Mm -hmm. We then created a visual, a really vibrant visual and verbal identity, a new logo, brand voice. Um, critically important was building consensus at the individual level. We visited more wise and more communities that I can tell you. Um, and then ultimately, we found that left to their own devices, um, you know, I'll use this word, although uh, it really wasn't, um, compliance was going to be difficult. 
mm-hmm. unless unless you provided these local wise with on the ground tools to introduce the new brand to their communities. Yeah. Uh, and the net of it was, was that uh, over the first 24 months after we uh, put this in place, um, it led to a six times increase in internet searches and a dramatic uh, increase in donations. So, you know, I, I I'm, um, you know, when I started in this business, um, the branding business, um, it really was a, a communications business and a marketing business. And, and what I would sort of summarize as a words and pictures business. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I think w- what it's becoming is an actions and behaviors business. Um, and, and really um, driving um, a simplified strategy, not, not just into one's communications, but literally using it as the operating, and this is what the why did, um, using it as, as the core operating philosophy. Mm-hmm. So that when you're going back to the elevator speech at somebody in the why, the CEO in the why, you know, what's the business of the why? It's they're about strengthening local communities, period. And mm-hmm. we do that in a bunch of ways, period. And and so I think that that's, that's, that was a pretty good example Um there are others I can give you others or we can move on but that was a pretty that was a pretty good one yeah yeah and I've I've, I've just jumped on there and I've seen the uh the the simplicity of of what you're talking about and I guess as, especially with such a complex project what you're really looking for is that alignment uh across every single touch point and when you have such a complex organization you know getting to that simplicity is key to that alignment because if you make it if you make it too complicated then you're never going to get that alignment so uh you know it, it's it is when you're dealing with such big organizations that uh, that alignment is absolutely critical and the simplicity just plays into that have you seen any examples of mistakes when it comes to simplicity because as you said simplicity is not just clarity clarity can be super boring you know uh, have you seen any examples of of uh mistakes um or or do you remember any stories of when when someone sh- uh, someone shot for for simplicity and they ended up just in in kind of you know the 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 boring kind of yeah we're understood but there's nothing spectacular about this well yeah just you know one thing you could do is just turn on the television set um I, I think the common mistakes that brands make when trying to implement simplicity um, is um, they either try to impl- they 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 err on the side of too much clarity mm-hmm. and not enough surprise, and that's the vast majority of <laughs> of um, what you see on you know social media or or where, whatever, wherever you touch. That's it's basically it's just. You're not going to move somebody, I believe, that to go all the way back to the beginning, that the power of ideas is that it moves you emotionally. Mm-hmm. I, I just, I mean, that's just what it is for me. I don't think you can convince people. And I, you might be able to convince them to do something with facts. But I, I think what brands, what you really want to do, um, you know, is, and it's it's an overused word, but but build loyalty which means to me it's you're willing to invest yourself in this organization you know however that however that is whether it's as simple as buying their products or donating to them or volunteering for them Um, but i think to come back to your question there's either too much clarity and not enough surprise there's too much surprise and not enough clarity Mm-hmm. And here's the key one. Sometimes in a chase for simplicity, brands um, brand stories become generic. Mm. Because what happens is they're trying to get to something that's so simple that it moves away from the brand's unique DNA. Mm. I mean, you can go up and up and up and up a benefit chain, and ultimately, you've gone too far. 
it's the converse of what we were talking about before when you mire somebody in the details. Mm. This is the converse of that when you get to a point where, you know, <laughs> water is a liquid and that's what we stand for. Yeah. I, I, it, that's it's that's so funny that you said that because I, I've, I've just been uh, speaking recently um, with uh, with with a group in, in my inner circle in a boot camp and we've been talking about positioning and and you know the the five whys uh, where you drill down you really get to and and the the idea is that you know you you really want to dig down to what people really want but if you dig too if you dig too deep you always get to the same point and that is you know everybody wants more uh more more customers or or more revenue or more uh you know time in their lives they want more clients more often um but it's 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 really when you come back up one or two levels to th to that why do you hit the sweet spot of relevance and right. you know that's really where you need to speak to if you if you dig too deep you're always going to arrive at, as you said, that, you know, plenty of clarity, but yeah. where's the magic? You know, where is the, where's the surprise? As you said, what, what influence would you say that surprise has on consumer decision-making? I think it's, I, I think it's huge. Um, if, if the surprise is rooted in the DNA of the firm, and it is and, and and it's a and and has at its center of gravity a bias towards emotion mm. i think it can be phenomenal i mean look at a company like um oh we recently did something for the uh, u.s army we just did a huge program um with the u.s army uh in conjunction with um a sister agency at omnicom called the uh, ddb uh, you know, the U.S. Army has faced recently real recruiting challenges uh, due both to a competitive labor market, but also a perceived lack of relevance to Gen Z's, you know, the younger people's you know, values and priorities. Mm. You know, as you know, Gen Z, I see this all the time in my company, too. And I think it's something that is it gives me real hope for the future. You know, that cohort wants a sense of purpose they want a sense of professional growth mm -hmm. they ask the why far more often than you know i did when i was um just you know a, a, a junior um, beginning my career but that found that the army really lacked the platform and tools to to convey its identity and offering to that group with conviction which is where they're getting their recruits so in conjunction with the ddb um, we help the army express its brand in a really credible and compelling way. We, you know, we portrayed the, the, the simple idea was we portrayed the U.S. Army as really a landscape of possibility. Mm -hmm. You know, communicating the the values in a really consistent, authentic way, and enabling the communications really importantly to thrive in a digital media environment. We brought back. Um, the tagline, be all that you can be, be all you mm. can be, mm -hmm. a very popular tagline um, that had not been, you know, more, more recently used, um, which really created a singular uh, uh, promise around possibilities. It also um, uh, integrated the three groups of stakeholders, the active duty folks, the Army Reserve and the Army National Guard. And then we looked at, you know, uh, you can see it uh, recently launched, very simple visual identity, um, which was really uh, unmistakably DNA U.S. Army, no nonsense, right? Mm -hmm. um, trans we transformed a heritage symbol from the U.S. flag into a modern icon. The logo, if you look at it, is a star within a star, mm -hmm. which is really that illustrates the notion of a person who serves being a star you, mm -hmm. You're with a team of stars. You're a star yourself. Reinforces the idea of, of possibilities. So, I mean, I think that there were um, um, really all of this served to try to connect to the hearts and minds of target audiences. Um, so that just launched. 
But again, it was all about simplicity. It was all about um, getting to, you know, what 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 was going to resonate with a core group of audiences that weren't hearing your message. Mm. Uh, and and so that's another one that is really um, it's gotten a lot of play too. So it's been great. Yeah, and and I suppose you you probably you know when you do come across those. Uh, projects where you know there is some heritage there like you've mentioned ymca u.s mm -hmm. army uh you know there there is such significance in the existing brand and it's about kind of re-establishing that um and and reconnecting that and and that's you know when you have those challenges in front of you they're the ones that you go okay you know we're dealing with with you know some some real heritage here let's let's kind of revitalize that and and be part of their story so you know i love uh i love being being able to to kind of reimagine something that existed in the past and bring yeah. it into yeah. uh bring it into right. the to the modern world well i think you're right i think i mean i think that is spot on um i regrettably don't do these projects as much as i would like um going back to what we we're talking about at the outset but mm -hmm. when i was doing them um what i always wanted to 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 i always wanted to in the analysis phase there was always somebody in an organization who was for lack of a better word the librarian the historical librarian and and you could go in and and find out what what were the founders thinking what 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 why did they find why did they develop this thing you know i mean if you look at another client we had was hp we've worked with hp and then hpe but if you went if you go back to hewlett and packard um you know they founded that company mm -hmm. with no products they didn't have a product what they what they had was an idea and their idea was we can help we can help improve people's lives with technology mm -hmm. that was the vision mm -hmm. and tell me that that's not as relevant now as it was when they founded the company in a garage and wherever it was palo alto or wherever that was so i always wanted to go back to what it was at the beginning mm -hmm. i think sometimes um consultants in our field in general when they're brought in to solve something a problem um I, I think that the bias sometimes is too too new we have to do something that's never been done before mm. i also think that when you start throwing around the word heritage um people say people hear that and they say old mm -hmm. i think a better word than heritage is to explore the equity of the mm -hmm. brand what mm -hmm. is the true equity of the brand and how is it relevant in a world where digital technology you know has totally changed the game um, mm -hmm. so i think you're absolutely right um about looking for those things that maybe are red threads even today mm -hmm. because the companies that we're talking about okay the hps the y's the army these are aircraft carriers these are not pt boats mm -hmm. You know how long? Do you know how long an, it takes to stop an aircraft carrier in the open seas when it's full throttle all ahead? No, I think I've heard it before, but miles, I, it's not... miles. <laughs> so I think that's another thing to think about. You know, these things are not ripe for revolution. Mm. They're ripe in many cases for evolution, and I think yeah. we we would be better served in general in our industry if clients knew coming in that they were uh, partnering with somebody who had an appreciation and a respect for the things that had come before they got there yeah and and look that you know it's it's the it's the whole idea of of building on what's already there you know uh any brand that's been around for decades are have an edge by default because there's there is an element of inbuilt trust that if they have been around this long serving people for this long, then there's a reason that they're still here um, and throwing the baby out with the bathwater just to be new and more relevant. Uh, you know, it, it 
it kind of doesn't it doesn't make sense. There have been uh, many examples of brands that have been reimagined and held on to that equity, as you said. Old Spice is another is wow. another example. Great. Yeah. Um. What What would you say is and I I, I realize that that we're we're uh, we're we're getting on here. I'd probably like to finish on, uh, you know, this idea of a poster child of a brand, whether you worked on it or not. What do you what brand do you look to as the yardstick, the the one that you you speak to the younger generation coming up as you know this this is how you do things. The, you know, look to this brand for lessons in whether it's messaging or positioning. You know, what's what's your favorite example of a, of a brand who just gets it? You know, I, I really want to have something that no one has ever heard of. Mm -hmm. And I don't. Um, I think that there are a number of them. The one that, um, you know, I'm, I'm I've, I've been um, a participant in athletics for my entire life. Mm -hmm. And the one that um, really speaks to me is Nike. Mm hmm. I mean, think about what Nike is about. Um, thinking, thinking about things like, you know, I, I would love, like we all have probably, um, to have played in the NBA. Mm. You know, and um, the fact that I'm five foot nine on, on my good days and a hundred and, you know, well, a little heavier now, but 175 pounds soaking wet. Um, I learned pretty pretty early on that that probably wasn't going to happen. <laughs> but I think what Nike um, really, really captured was um, the individual sense of of and love for competition, mm. both competition perhaps against another team, but also competition as one gets older with oneself mm -hmm. and the importance of striving and the importance of um, competing. And they encapsulated that in their one line of just do it. I mm -hmm. mean, you know, t you show me um, the last communication that Nike came out talking about athletic shoes. Mm -hmm. I'll give you a thousand bucks because mm -hmm. you can't find them. No, because they have so embraced a so what story, and then they have executed it brilliantly mm -hmm. you know, with with the association with athletics, mm -hmm. you know, and the and really the alignment of the weekend warrior mm -hmm. with the world class athlete. Because they're competing and we're competing, you know. It's it's almost like golf, right? The beauty of golf, right? It's a handicap system, right? I can get out there with John Rahm. Mm -hmm. you know? I'm going to need, you know, I'm going to need 10 shots a hole, but we can play. <laughs> and, and, and I just think that, and, you know, there are countless others, but I, I just, every time I see that it speaks to me and some days when I literally, when I don't want to go to the gym, I think of that. Just do it. Just stop talking about it. Just go. Just go. And it's motivational. So I wish I had a better answer for your viewers. And if I had a couple of days, I might be able to come up with one. Uh, but I do think that um, a key piece of that um, is, is regardless if you're in a, a for-profit or not-for-profit situation, finding a cause. Mm -hmm. You know, I think FedEx does a great job. You know, FedEx, their business is about moving packages around and logistics, right? Mm -hmm. But that's not what they're talking about. They're talking about commitment. Mm -hmm. They're talking about personal commitment. Mm -hmm. Our most important packages are yours. Mm -hmm. So it's again, it goes back to the so what story and then delivering that so what story, mm -hmm. delivering it every day. So those are the kinds of things that um, and the other way, the other way to do it is when you come across a brand and it speaks to you, REI is another one, you know, I mean, all of these such phenomenal customer service. And I just, um, 
I just think those brands who have figured out how to elevate hmm. and then deliver consistency, delivery, delivery, delivery is 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 the key thing. Because if you're looking for your business problems to be solved with a tagline alone, hmm. no matter how rooted it is in the DNA of the organization, no matter how um, clear and surprising it is, and you don't drive that through everything the organization does, that is a good way to ensure your obsolescence quickly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I love the, the, the differentiation of cause there because we speak a lot about purpose and brand purpose. And I think that's been, you know, it's been done to death to the point that it's lost any kind of uh, meaning. And, you know, people latch on to a so-called bigger purpose for the sake of a bigger purpose. But I think a yeah. cause is a little different because, uh, yeah. you know, it is speaking to this, um, to this, to this reason that, that we're here. So I think, you know, that, that, that cause, and as you said, brands that are able to latch themselves onto a cause and uh, filter everything through that, because as you said, Nike is is you know you want to have a a a more unique example, but when it does everything so well, you know it has that cause. But then they've got all of these verticals from totally. Uh, totally. athletics to basketball to football, totally. and they're all relevant to each one of them even though their differentiated marketing speaks in a different language to those people, they all come back to the cause. You know, it's interesting. There's a guy, you probably know him named uh, Guy Kawasaki. And mm -hmm. he, he was a marketing specialist. He was um, one of the Apple employees who were originally um, responsible for marketing the Macintosh computer in 1984. Um, really famous guy. And he had a line that I, I think about a lot. He said, organizations don't need positionings. They need mantras. Mm -hmm. And I really believe that. I mean, because mm -hmm. ultimately, organizations first, in my view, organizations, primary customer are the employees. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, you've got you've to convince employees that they are part of something important mm. that is also bigger than any one of them. And more so today, as you said, with with uh, you know with the next generation who aren't happy as we did starting off in our careers to sit in a cubicle and just be the robot. Um, It'll you never know, happen. That, right. Yeah, that 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 culture now drives brands from the inside out, and if you get that right and attach it to a cause, then both employees and customers come together on the same cause. Um, just like anything else, you know, that you've seen. If you saw if you saw a really good movie that moved you, mm. and you and I were at a cocktail party and we were talking about movies, and, and I said to you, you know, have you seen any good movies lately? You'd be all over it. You'd mm -hmm. say, I love this movie. It did this. It did this. It moved me in this way. And I tell that there's no difference. Because mm -mm. you're invested emotionally in it. And I think sometimes, um, in evaluating these things, we err, um, we over rotate to left brain analytics, mm. um, which I grant you are important. And one of the reasons I like the evolution of the branding business from, as I said, words and pictures to actions and behaviors um, is that actions and behaviors are way, way, the results and the impact are way easier to quantify mm -hmm. than words and pictures. But I think ultimately, to move people is an emotional challenge. That's that's really what you have to do. And that's it. And that's that's really the crux of everything that we try to do as, as brand builders. Some do it better than others. Um so, some some struggle, some are great at it, but uh, you know, there are plenty of examples out there that we can look at and take inspiration from. Um, this chat has been inspirational in and of itself. I know that our, our listeners are going to take so much from this. Um, your time is, is obviously super valuable. The, the work that you do is, 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 is truly brilliant. Um, so thank you so much for taking the time to, to join us today. I could sit, sit here and chat all day, to be honest. Um, but, but, uh, but, uh, yeah. 
if um if uh if you guys do have anything that uh that you want to speak about going forward um we're here with a bit of a platform if you if you want to chat about it let us know this has been super interesting and i'd love to do it again yeah listen i really appreciate your time it's a great business our business is a great business and mm. uh and i think honestly it's getting better as we move to delivering world-class experiences and uh, i appreciate your taking the time to, to chat with me i'm uh I, 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 the only thing I would add going back to your, your first question about my own career is I, I have been blessed by, you know, many, many people and, and, and the team that we have at Seagull and Gale, which is a global team is made up of, of people that are just terrific and committed and, and nobody gets there alone. And mm -hmm. I am proof positive, uh, of that. So, uh, I hope to talk to you again and appreciate the time. We really hope you enjoyed today's episode. Thanks so much for listening. If you want to learn more brand strategy techniques to level up your skills, make sure you check out brandmasteracademy.com. There's plenty of free resources and premium content for you to download and get you going. If you'd like to join our Facebook group full of like-minded brand strategists, all learning from each other, then find us by searching for the Brand Strategy Community where you can find exclusive content for members as well. If you enjoyed this content, please be sure to give us an honest review on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you listened. And make sure you tune in for the next episode of the Brandmaster Podcast.